Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a basic economy system using Discord.js. This was actually a request from someone in the Warn Off Keys Discord, so if you do have any video requests, feel free to join and leave them in the suggestions channel and I'll see what I can do. But to get started, I'm going to make a new command folder, and if you don't have access to these files here, you can clone from the GitHub repository found in the video description. It'll give you access to the command base here, However, you don't need to know the inner workings of this, but I do cover that in a previous video. But with that said, I'll make a new folder within our commands directory. This will be called economy. And then within that, I'm going to make another new folder. This will be called balance.js. So inside of here, I'm going to export a empty object. The first property will be commands, and this is going to be balance and bal are going to be valid commands to actually run this. Our max arguments will be one, then our expected args will be a string with brackets inside of it. This will symbolize that these are actually optional because you can just run exclamation point bal to get your own balance, or you can run bal and then the actual user's at. So we can say target users at. Then after that, I'm going to have our callback, which will then have our message object here as a parameter. Now within this, I want to gain access to the actual mentions. And if those mentions don't exist, then I'm going to assume that that's going to be the actual author itself. So to do this, we can say const target equals message dot mentions dot users dot first. And if this is null or undefined or something like that, then we can say or message dot author. And so here I can actually gain access to the ID. So const target ID equals target dot ID, and I can console log this. We can say ID is target ID. So if I save this, I can run the bot with node index.js. And then we also see registering command balance. And so that should be working. So going into tutorial, I can run bal and it says my user ID here. But if I run bal at tutorial, it'll then see the tutorial's user ID there. And so actually detecting who we're looking for the balance of now works. But now before we continue, we actually have to set up our Mongo server. And so this is something I've covered in a couple of previous video tutorials. Those will be in the video description, but assuming you already have a local Mongo server, you can simply start that up. Also, I have this open in Mongo compass. So I'm actually able to visualize everything very simply. But with that said, inside of our schemas folder, I'm going to make a new file. This will be called profile schema.js. Now a schema is something that is going to essentially be a template or blueprint for how our table or collection should be set up. And so to do this, we have to first import mongoose. So constant mongoose equals require mongoose. Then we can say constant profile schema equals mongoose dot schema with a capital S. We're going to pass in an object. Now in previous Mongo videos, I've mentioned using underscore ID. However, if we don't include this, then one will be randomly generated for us. And we don't actually have to care about that. And that's what we're going to do in this case. However, we do want to save the guild ID, which will be a string. And actually I'm going to create a constant up here called required string. We're going to say the type of string and required is true. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we can now set guild ID to a required string and we can set user ID to another required string. Then we're going to have coins. This will be type of number and required is true. So this is our basic schema here. Now we have to actually export this. So module.exports equals mongoose.model. This is going to take in a string as the first argument, which will be the actual name of our collection. For here, we can just say profiles. And the second argument is going to be our actual schema, which is profile schema. We can now save and close this. And I'm going to actually make a new file within my main directory here. This one will be called economy.js. Now we need to import mongo.js, which is a simple utility I wrote. If you clone it from the repo, you'll have access to this. So we can import that with constant mongo equals require Mongo. And then we also need to import the schema we just created. So constant profile schema equals require within the schema folder, we're going to get access to profile schema. After that, we are going to say module.exports. This is going to be a function that passes in the client. However, I'm not going to actually add anything into this function right now. This is something I'll be expanding on in future videos as well. And so for now, I just want this here as a placeholder, but we do want to say module.exports.getcoins. This is going to be an asynchronous function, which will have two parameters, the first one being guild ID and the second one being user ID. 
So inside of here, we're actually going to connect to Mongo and then try and return from the profile collection what the current user's coins are based off of the user ID. So to do that, we can say return await Mongo, and then this returns a promise, so we can use dot then, and we're gonna have access to Mongoose. Now inside of here, like you've seen in my previous videos, we're gonna use try and finally. This is going to ensure that we actually close the connection using mongoose.connection.close. However, inside of our try, I'm going to run a console log. This will say running find one, and I'm going to add console logs to anything that we do when it comes to actually connecting to the Mongo database. That way that whenever we add in a caching layer to improve performance, you'll see how that actually works and you'll be able to actually visualize that change. If that doesn't make sense, just don't worry. Just keep following along. And I'll explain it better once we get to that part. So here I'm going to create a variable called result. This will be set equal to await profile schema dot find one. Now we're going to add in an object in here, but before we continue, we're using await. And so this function that we're inside of has to be asynchronous. Now find one takes in any number of actual properties within its object. So we can say guild ID and user ID, which are our arguments or parameters right here. And so essentially what this is going to do is it's going to find one within the profile collection that matches these two values. So after that, we have access to our results. We can actually console log that saying result and then result. But we also want to create a coins variable and have that equal to zero. Now, if we've never actually given the specific user a, any coins, then this is going to be undefined or null. And so we can say if result, this is assuming that we, they already have some coins. Then we can say coins equals result dot coins. Otherwise, we're going to want to actually save a new profile for this user. So we can say console.log inserting a document. And like I mentioned before, when it comes to running find one, I'm going to console log before we do anything with the database so we can visualize that in the console. I can then say new await new profile schema. And this is going to pass it an object, guild ID, user ID, and then coins, which will reference this variable here, which is zero. Then after that, we can run dot save, and this is actually going to insert this into our collection. So now after that else statement, we can simply return coins. And now I can save this. And if we go into our balance file, I can then import this file here. So constant economy equals require. And this is going back two directories. This is because the balance file is within the economy folder and also within the commands folder. And then the file we're looking for, which is economy.js, is at the root of our project. So now we have access to this. We can now gain access to the guild ID. So constant guild ID equals message.guild.id. And then the user ID, constant user ID equals target.id. And we need access to both of these because if we look inside of our economy file, get coins requires both of them because that's how we're actually going to search through the database. So here we can say message.reply. We're going to add in backticks. We'll say that user has coins, which we'll define here in a few seconds. Coins. So constant coins equals await. And then because we're using await, this function has to be asynchronous. So constant coins equals await economy dot get coins. We're going to pass on the guild ID and the user ID. Now, if I save this, I go to my console, I can restart the bot. I can then go into here. I can run exclamation point bow. This should target my own user. And it says that user has zero coins. However, we see running find one, which is expected because first we're going to see if we have any coins here but then it returned null. And so this else statement is ran, and that's why we see inserting a document right here. And so if we go into compass and we refresh, we then see profiles. If I click on this, we then see the guild ID and the user ID with coins of zero. So now if I go into here and I run bal at tutorial, they'll say that user has zero coins as well, but we should get a second element in here. So if I refresh, we see a second document here. And so we know that this is for sure working. So this function is actually complete here for this exact command. Obviously that we have no way to actually add coins. And so that's what we're going to add next. So I'm going to make a new file within the economy folder. This will be called add-balance.js. We're going to export another function here or another uh, JSON object. I mean, the first element will be commands, which will be an array. We can say add balance or add bal. And then after that, we're going to say the minimum arguments is two and the maximum arguments is two. This is because we want the command to always be add bal, the target at, and then, then the amount of coins. Then we can say expected args. We can then say the targets at, 
and then coin amount. After that, we're going to have permission error, and then we'll say you must be an administrator to use this command. And then to make sure that only administrators can run this, we can add in permissions, and then we can just say administrator. And so this will automatically check to see if, if the, whoever's running this has access to the administrator discord permission. And if not, they're going to get this error message that we specified above. Now, after that, we're going to add a callback, which will have access to the message and the arguments, which will be the actual arguments that we specified here, but within an array. And on the side of here, const mention equals message dot mentions dot users dot first. We can say if not mention, we then want to complain to the user. So message dot reply, please tag a user to add coins to, and then we can return. After that, so we're going to get the number of coins. So const coins equals arguments index one. This is because whenever someone runs add bal and then add some random user here, and then like 50, this is going to be index zero in the arguments array. And this is going to be index one in the arguments array. And so this will give us access to the coins. Now we need to see if this is actually a number. So if is nan for not a number, this is a JavaScript function. We're going to pass in the coins. We then want to complain to the user. So message.reply. Please provide a valid number of coins, and then we can return. Then we can get access to the guild ID. So const guild ID equals message.guild.id. And then the user ID, constant user ID equals mention.id. This is referencing our constant variable up here. Now, before we continue, we actually want to go through and add in a function here. So here we can say module.exports.addCoins. This is going to be another asynchronous function. This is going to have the guild ID and the user ID similar to get coins. However, here we need the actual amount of coins to add. And so within here, we're going to do some very similar code. So we're going to return await Mongo. So we're going to connect to our Mongo database. This return to promise. So we'll use dot then. We need an asynchronous function that has the mongoose parameter here. And then within this, we're going to use try and finally. And this will make sure that no matter what happens, we're actually going to close our mongoose connection. So mongoose.connection.close. And inside of here, like I've been doing with console logging, what we're doing with the database, I'm going to add a console log. And this will then say running find one and update. And so we're actually going to get access to that. So we're going to store the results of this inside of a variable called result. And we can say await a profile schema dot find one and update. And this is going to take in three different objects as arguments. The first one is going to be unique identifiers to try and find what we're looking for. And so we can pass in the guild ID and the user ID. This will find and return any documents that match these two things, which happen to be our actual arguments here. The second object is going to be what we're actually going to insert or update. And so we can say guild ID and user ID. And the reason why we're inserting these is because we're going to have this function look for something. And if it does exist, we're going to return that. That's great. However, if it doesn't exist, we're going to then insert this into the actual document. Next, we need to actually increase the number of coins. And I covered this in a previous video where I talked about the actual message counter. So we can use dollar sign ink. And inside this is going to be an object with everything to actually increase. And then we can simply pass in coins, which will take in the value here. So let's say that we pass 50 as our coins here. It'll actually increase the amount of coins we have on our database by 50 for this specific user. And this is going to work whether we're entering the document for the first time or updating the document on an existing user. Now, this object here is going to be some options. We can say upsert is true, and this is going to be in combination of insert and update, and this is what I've been mentioning. Now, I'm actually wanting to return the number of coins the user has after all of this, and to do this, we have to specify new is true. This will have this function return the updated document within our database. If we don't do that, it'll just return the previous document that was already there. So now we have the most up-to-date information within our result. After all of that, we could then say return result.coins. I'm actually going to console log this just so we can have a better idea of what's happening. So we can say result, result right there. Now I can save this, I can go back. However, we now want to actually import this so we can import our economy file. So constant economy equals require, going back two directories and then economy. This is the same reason as before, we're two folders in. Now here, I'm going to get the number of new coins we have. So constant new coins equals await. Because we're using await, this function has to be asynchronous. So await economy dot add coins with a pass in our three arguments. The first one being the guild ID, the second one being the user ID, the third one being the amount of coins, which we have in a variable right here. 
And obviously the other two are variables right here as well. So this should return the number of coins that the user now has. If we go back, we see that we're returning result.coins, and so that is expected. Now we can actually reply to the user. We can say message.reply. We're going to use a template literal here, and we'll say you have given, we're going to tag the user, so less than, at symbol, and then user ID, and then a greater than sign. This is just a standard syntax to tag someone within Discord JS. So you have given this user, and then we're going to enter the amount of coins. Now note that coins is the actual variable that the user submitted, and new coins is how many they have after adding them. Let's say that we run add val some person's at and then 50. This is what this will be here. It'll say 50. So you've given whatever user however many coins. And then after that, I want to say they now have, and then we're going to insert new coins. So if I save this and I restart the bot, I can then go back and I can make sure I have zero coins, which I do. Now I can actually add balance. So add bal, I can tag myself and I can give myself 100 coins. We then see that I have given myself 100 coins. They now have 100 coins. And if I go into the database and I refresh, we then see I have 100 coins right here. Now, if I were to do this again, add balance Alexander Flores, let's say 800. It'll then say I've given myself 800 coins. They now have 900 coins. And so if I go into the database and I refresh, we then see I have 900 coins. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to add a layer of caching into this application. The reason for that is Typically, database calls are more expensive. They're going to take longer to actually execute. And so I'm wanting to store everything within a local variable within our economy file. And so whenever we go to get coins, if we know about that user's coins, we can just return it from memory. But if we don't, we could then pull it from the database, save that result to memory, and then return that. And so we're only going to actually fetch from the database once per user upon each restart. So to do that, at the very top, I'm going to create a constant here. This will be called coins cache, and this is going to be an object. Now this is going to be set up as there's going to be a string, which will be a combination of guild ID, dash, and then user ID, and then there's going to be the actual coins here. And so this is going to help us cache this between different users, or rather the same user within different guilds, and they'll keep those separate. So one thing I want to do down here is whenever we're actually getting the coins, the first thing I want to do is I want to see if this actually exists. So const cached value, this is going to access the coins cache object we just created. And then we're going to access the index of guild ID dash user ID. Now, if this exists, we then want to return it. And this way we don't actually go through and run find one or anything else. However, we're never actually updating this. And so whenever we go to return this information here, we can actually update it right there. We can say coins cache index of guild ID dash user ID, and this is going to equal coins. So now we're going to update this object here. And so whenever we go to run get coins again, we're actually not going to run this. Now, like you've been seeing, whenever we're actually console logging, running find one, we can actually see if this works. So we can save this, we can restart the bot, and I can then run bal, and it says running find one, it says I have 900 coins, and if I run it again, it doesn't do that because it stored it in memory. And now that's much faster. Now the user won't actually notice a technical difference, but if you have your bot within many different servers or within very large servers, then your bot will start lagging as there's more load onto it. So this is one way to improve that. However, we have this function, which isn't using caching at all. And so whenever we go to update it, we want to make sure we actually update it here, but we also want to update it locally within the cache. And so before we return here, we can say coins cache index of guild ID dash user ID equals result dot coins, which is actually what, what we're returning right here. So I can save this and we can restart the bot. I can go in and I can check my balance. And now I can check my balance again. And we see that find one isn't being ran. It ran this one time because whenever your bot restarts, everything in memory is cleared. However, I can add balance to myself. I can give myself 100 coins. And it says it's running find one and update. That's always going to happen. But now if I run balance, it's not actually running find one again because we updated it in the cache whenever we actually updated it in the database. And so this is going to be a somewhat simple way to actually improve the performance of this. And this isn't everything you could do when it comes to actual economy. Sometime in the near future, I'm actually going to go back to this and expand off of this functionality. So if you have any ideas that you'd like to see in that video, please leave a comment down below or suggest them within the Warnoff Keys Discord. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, 
feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.